In this series, we head to Boondocks Firearms Training Academy with trainers Chris and Michelle Serino. Chris and Michelle spend time in a training simulator, and we get an inside look into their mindset during some fast-paced, violent encounters. Holy crap. I'm scared. Hey! So on this next scenario, I arrive at my house and I find the front door open. What I need to know is, is anybody home that I care about? Hey, my front door's open. Whoa. Hey, anybody in there? Hey, there's a shadow. There's a shadow moving. I can see that. Shell, is that you? Hey, 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 whoa, what are you doing? What are you, what are you, where's my wife? I don't see, I don't see any blood on him. Get back, get back, get back. I would have let him come a little closer, personally, because I didn't see blood on him. He had a knife, he was coming at me, and he's an easy target, and I was gonna shoot him high center chest. But, kinda went a little fast for me. But that knife is dangerous. And his eyes tell me that he's up to no good. Yeah, I, I would have I backpedaled a little more. I would have backpedaled probably a lot. I might have even slipped on the steps, but I still shot him. You know, knowing number one, how big your front porch is, or just being mindful how to step, how to step and move to retreat. I mean, when I'm, when I'm looking at him, I'm looking at him through my gun. It's not down here at chest level. I'm, I'm watching him through the gun. I already saw his hands. His hands went down here. I didn't see any movement. I didn't see the, gun, the knife drop. And he was coming at me with intent in his eyes. Means, opportunity, and intent. Does he have the means? Sure, he's got a big knife. Has he got the opportunity? Yeah, he's pretty close to me. And his eyes were telling me his intent was to harm me. So he got shot. I would have done it on the back pedal, though, because I would have tried just to give him the option to stop. Because we have that quite often where people will drop their weapon, even though they'll move at you. So if you come home and you find your front door open, you probably shouldn't go inside. My front door's open. I'm getting on the phone with police. Whoa, he's got a knife. Whoa, whoa, drop that knife, drop the knife. But if something materializes fast like that, I see the door open, I get my gun out, I realize someone's coming at me, I've got to be able to deal with it. So thanks to the frangible ammo, we can shoot steel really close and we can train this technique right here. The biggest thing to remember is when I'm moving backward, I've got to know how to move my feet so that I don't trip and fall down on something. And let's talk about that. So there's a couple things that are very important when you talk about shooting on the move. Uh, first and foremost is I have to stabilize my upper body so that I can maintain good sight alignment, good sight picture and deliver hits on target. The other thing is how do I move my feet so as to minimize the possibility that I might trip? So I do that simply by when I walk forward, I walk heel to toe. So if I walk rearward, I walk toe to heel. If I point my feet in the direction I'm moving forward, that helps me to move a little more smoothly and stabilize my upper body. Same if I'm moving to the rear. I'm not going to walk with my feet pointed out to the sides. I'm going to try to keep them in line. So as I move rearward, all I'm doing is kind of dragging my toes a little bit, but I'm trying to stay as close to the ground as possible. So I can stabilize and then work those toe to heel, toe to heel, toe to heel. And it looks smooth like this. I start moving backwards. I'm toe heel, toe heel. The gun comes out, upper body stable. And I can move smoothly and deliver accurate fire simply by the way I use my feet. <laughs> 